anti-hijab Iranian activist sentenced to over three years of imprisonment. Uh, I'm going to have a hard time with this name. My apologies. Malika uh, Karaguzlu, a 22-year-old Iranian women's rights activist, was handed down a verdict of over three years and eight months by the Islamic Revolutionary Court of Tehran for protesting against the mandatory hijab rules of Iran. Alongside the sentence, Malika has been fined 80 million tomans, which is roughly 250 US dollars. On July 12th, Malika posted a clip of herself on a social media platform declaring her participation in a nationwide anti-hijab civil disobedience campaign in opposition to the regime's National Day of Hijab and Chastity. She was arrested the following day. On September 19th, her lawyer, Mohammed Ali uh, Kamfurzi, Kamfurzi, posted on Twitter about her sentence. He also added, my client has numerous medical records, and although the forensic doctor confirmed that she must be under the supervision of a specialized psychiatrist, that was not taken into account in issuing the verdict. The verdict for Malika comes as Iran encounters widespread protests after the death of a 22-year-old woman, Masa Amini, who died in police custody after being arrested for wearing a hijab improperly. These unprecedented protests have thoroughly broken the hijab taboo, causing many within the government to question the viability of continuing to enforce the compulsory hijab law. So... I thought that this was really important to cover because she was given this sentence in the middle of the nationwide protests that have shaken the regime to its core. And so in what many horrible ways, timing, horrible timing. And I also thought that this was very significantly giving a signal, right? Like, yeah, like, so she was sentenced on September 19th. This is three days after the death of Masa when, you know, streets are on fire. Like you, you, want, you, you would assume that this is the time that you want to, like, chill a little bit. Like, people are in the street extremely angry, and you might want to, like, tone it down. Like, maybe, like, maybe take it back and say that. I understand these people. I'm, I'm unbelievable. Like, yeah. what is, what they, maybe they're signaling that, what is it? What is the purpose of this? They're trying to show the people like we're not backing down. I think so, yeah. and I think it's also important to consider that this feeds into the wider of the wider context of how Masa came to be murdered, because Iran has always had well, the Islamic Republic of Iran has always had the compulsory hijab law, but it's recently under Raisi that things have gotten emboldened become hardline like ultra conservative and this was signaled specifically it became much starker in july when they announced that they were going to be promoting hijab through this na national hijab and chastity day and also secret documents were leaked from the government that shows how far they are willing to go in terms of their hijab enforcement and we covered that on the show a few weeks ago and like the level of authoritarianism that was outlined in this document is insane like literally starting to revoke people's licenses for stuff they do in their cars that are too anti-regime like there is no distinction between public and private anymore they're looking for any way that they can to come after you right and so in response to the national hijab and chastity day Masih Ajad and a lot of other major anti-compulsory hijab activists help organized, basically in response, the No to Hijab Day. And they're like, okay, on this day where you're going to be promoting the fact that you force us to wear this, you're going to be promoting these ideals that enforce modesty culture. Modesty culture is the bedrock of RAPE culture, okay? In response to that, we are going to be doing civil disobedience, we're going to be removing our hijab. And a lot of women posted videos of themselves. Malika was one of the ones who was way more bold in the video that she posted. She showed her full face just walking down the street. A lot of women just shot it from behind. They had masks on, sunglasses, all this stuff. This is a screenshot from Malika's 
video. You can see that she's just straight up like, no, this is me. I'm against this. She was very bold and she was arrested immediately afterwards. And so I wanted to cover this because I think it's really important that in the midst of all the turmoil that's going on, that we don't forget about the women that were arrested for doing the civil disobedience. And this could potentially be a very worrying sign about what could happen to the people who are engaging in protests now. If anything, the people who are engaging in protests now could face a lot worse because of how much more um, bold the form of disobedience is now in comparison to the No to Hijab Day. No to Hijab Day was a freaking cakewalk in comparison to what's happening now. Like, in, in comparison to now, like, it seems so mild. But even still, yeah. like, no, the No to Hijab Day was incredibly brave. And so I don't want us to forget about, you know, women like this who are who are going to be facing consequences for these things. All the women we've seen throwing their hijabs off in the street, burning their hijabs off, you know, as they celebrate and dance around in circles with each other. This could be them in a matter of weeks. Yeah, and they know it and they still do it. I don't understand this level of bravery. I think it happens when you don't have any other, um, when you have nothing to look forward to. Where does Susie go? I don't know what to do now. Um, let me see in the live chat. Yeah, I, I actually don't know if they can, like right now there is like thousands of, you know, people without a job. Like what are they going to do? They can't arrest, it's, the prisons are already overpopulated, like by... A huge margin like there's no room like are they just gonna just pick a few and make an example of the of them because they're like they can't arrest everybody there's just too many people without a job right now in iran there's just way too many remember susie when they were just like when we were covering news that they were talking about how they could monitor people better for a proper job they were going to use face recognition technology and they're not going to let them on trains or into buses, government buildings, they're not the government buildings and yeah. banks, or they're going to punish restaurants for letting in women without without with improper hijab. In. That just seemed like they wanted to go that way. They were like, okay, we need to. It's getting out of hand. But now look how much, like, like look how big of a dream that. Remember, I told you that I looked like a fantasy. Like they're not going to be able to do that. I was like, no, you can't do that. Like it's like it's, it looks impossible. To do that right now and now that was like how many weeks ago that was like two weeks ago i think or three weeks ago uh but look how far we are compared to that like sure try it <laughs> like like we ha right now as we're speaking there are women walking without their hijab in defiance in the middle of the street in in the thousands how are you going to clean up like it's a, we have set a new normal like i i can't imagine how they're going to clean up this mess i mean what they would describe as a mess so yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't seem achievable anymore. Yeah, I think we turn every time. Like we, when in this in the eighties, it, it was unimaginable for it being normal for women to wear their hijab showing their hair, right? Like in the nineteen eighties, if you told people like, oh, one day the Islamic Republic will let women would be walking in the streets putting their hijab here and showing their hair, showing like, their yeah, ears. Sure. Showing your, you were like, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Now, now the regime is interviewing people on its own government TV that they're pro regime while they have hijabs up to here. I saw a video of the government of on TV on government TV. There were people like having Iranian flag or Qasem Soleimani pictures showing like in pro regime protests, right? Like they they um artificially have made and boosted to show like no not all protests are against the regime and the people that they were interviewing eight at 80 to 90 percent of them didn't have proper hijab Mahsa Amini, <laughs> yeah they were like yeah we're pro regime and stuff one of them had their hijab up to here like it was almost around just her neck showing her entire head and blonde she had color her hair blonde and she was like, yes, we will not let this regime fall. I was like, sister, where's your hijab? 
What the hell is happening? <laughs> How is the regime TV is like, she has like Mahsa Amini had so much more hijab than this woman that you're interviewing. I, I wish I could find that video. I Wait, couldn't... that's so funny. <laughs> it made like... you a solid kafir go, sister, where is your hijab? <laughs> sister, you're supporting the regime without a hijab? Like, and the TV. And we gave it's murders. Just, it's just such hypocrisy. Because in one, on one, you know, on one hand, they go arrest somebody for having just showing Mahsa Amini and killing a woman for just showing a little bit of hair. Okay. But on the other hand, they're ready to use because you know why? I, I wish this was here. You know why? Guys, tell me in the live chat. You know why the regime, who is so much like, oh, we're going to arrest everybody that is have an improper job, blah, blah, blah. They have like um, the announcements that this is going to be the new normal. We have new fines for improper jobs, right? But why, why, guess, tell me in the live chat and Susie, why when they're interviewing people and putting it on state TV, okay, government propaganda, why is 80 to 90% of the women who are saying yes for per, per regime, why do they have their hair showing? Why they, or they have less of a hijab than the woman they killed? The Mahsa Amini had more hijab than these women. Why do you think the ones that they show, like they had a lot of chadori, the woman who, the woman that they were interviewing without improper hijab, she was surrounded by women with chador. But they, they give the mic to the woman that doesn't have a proper hijab to show on national TV. Why do you think that is? Because they want to show that it's not just the religiously conservative looking people that support them. They want to show yes. that their ideology is more popular than just the ones that look like they're conservative on the outside yes. like we are everywhere yes. like we're yes. we're the liberal women too you know yes. By that yes yes okay yes but okay and also the fact that they know that this is the type of woman that people will listen to okay that the chadori woman like like yes like you like a lot of a lot of iranian young people like why should i listen to her she's like a religious like fanatic or something right that's that's not Fair to some of them, but again, that's how that a lot of young people would feel like, right? Um, so this is the kind of but but they are such hypocrites. The message that people receive by which watching that, like you tell us that what looking at this is anti-Islamic, but when it comes to your own propaganda, you're show, you're putting it on TV and showing it to us. We can, Islamically, we shouldn't even be looking at this. We should be lowering our gaze. Why are you making us sin? We're all horny now because of the hair. Are you showing us? You made us all horny because we're seeing hair on TV, and now you're all sinning. You're sinning because we're horny. The TV is making us horny, and whoever put this on the screen is like committing a major, major sin. And one sin for every person who's watching this, based on your own standards. You're telling us that you making somebody see something so sexy is sinning for every person who watches it and then you put it on national tv what are we to believe like you're willing to like piss on your own values when it comes to uh, keeping the regime intact and people see this that kind did they see the hypocrisy and they're like you have no standards you don't even abide by your own standards you kill the girl you kill the girl for having more hijab than this woman yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like trying to go to the bathroom quickly and I just hear you screaming in my ear about horniness. I'm like, of course Armin turns it into horniness. Of course. That's what they say. They say the horny hijab, the horny jihad. Is that my that's what they say. They're like you ask them why we need the hijab. They say because you don't know men, men get horny over everything. Like yeah, you know I mean, what they true. do? They say, I mean, yeah, that's true. But what you can't? Okay, but any, <laughs> there's no stopping that. Okay, here's the thing. They say, they say, they say that if women could see in men's minds, if they could see a glimpse, one second of what goes in men's minds, they would not wear the hijab. They would wear iron suits. That's what they say. Honestly, that probably true. <laughs> I they think were like, they, they might would, be right. They would say they, that's what they tell us. They would say they, women would ditch their hijab and they would go into the streets with iron suits. 
that's what they would do. They they say a hijab is the minimum. Okay, so that's what. I, well, I shouldn't but, generalize to all men. I just know what Armin thinks about, and I think that would be the appropriate <laughs> response. <laughs> hey, I'm proud of that. Okay, there's nothing ashamed. Nothing to ashamed of. Like I don't. Yeah. Anyways. Okay, the responses to your <laughs> horny dissertation are killing me. <laughs> What? What is it? <laughs> Shriyash is like, I'll F my TV. <laughs> <laughs> and Sorku is saying, put a blurka on that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they don't have burkas in Iran, but okay. Chador but is no, Chador. The, the invention of a blurka, that's genius. Yeah. That's basically what Ali Dawa and Daniel Hakikaju, what they do. When they were interviewing women, they put a blurka on ah, them. Ah, blurka. Okay, I was slow today. Okay, get okay. <laughs> it. Oh good. my god! I wish I had that video ready. I, you you want me to look for it? Yeah. Okay. Talk to the. I think people. what you were saying in terms of like making examples out of women. So Bara Bara Hart is saying. They'll make examples until it becomes physically impossible. That's the pattern. Also, they're dumb, so we're not talking a lot of time. <laughs> um, I think this is really important, is that we need to, even though we think that, oh, they're just making an example out of this person, they can't control the trend, they can't control the tide, we still need to be paying close attention to the people who they make examples out of. And we need to be standing with them and talking about what happens to them and fighting for them. Because we have seen that external pressure on the regime works. We have a lot of evidence for this. So we need to be keeping a radar and a, a finger on, on the pulse of what happens to these people so that we can be there to exert pressure when it's needed. What are you, what are you pulling up? Okay, I'm going to have to pull it for, from the place that I found it, which I don't want to. But I don't have any other chance because I, I saw this on Omid Dono's channel. That's where I saw it. Ah, our but favorite, Omid Dono. <laughs> so I don't want to give this guy any of views. Yeah, yeah. For those who don't I, know, Omid Dono is basically a Persian fascist. Yeah, he's a fascist. He's a Zoroastrian <laughs> apostate, but he supports the regime. It's It's confusing. <laughs> Okay, so look at behind them. Oh, that's the girl wow. That, look, that's the girl that we're interviewing. So look, they were here, here, like here's one example, like the Iranian people, like the pro-regime Iranians, right? Without the hijab, like without proper hijab. Mahsa Amini had more hijab than this. Look, this is pro-regime. This is the Iranian regime, government TV. They're like, oh, yeah, we love the country. You're like, we love Khamenei. Look with the images of Khamenei and Ghassim Soleimani. And the, somebody has a Quran back there. God damn it. Somebody has a Quran back there. And this lady has an outfit that is like pro, like shows, like we think as liberal. She's showing her hair. This is the same type of woman who get arrested. for Like, this is illegal. This is illegal based on Iranian government laws. If she wasn't being interviewed right now, okay, she would be arrested by morality police. Yet they're using her, I get, but it gets worse. Okay, so what, like, 10 person was like this. So we're like, he, Omid is saying like, oh, because he goes through so many examples of people showing their hair. And then he goes, cuts so like, finally one with a chador. Like he himself is sort of like, among all of these people that they're interviewing, but look, it keeps zooming in on like the girls with that uh, with that show hair, but like this one, like okay, as much as I hate him, look at his reaction here. Like his reaction, like like how, like he's like, are you serious? He himself is like, are you serious here? Like, are you serious? Like this is the this is absolute hypocrisy. Look at how much hair they're showing. Like she doesn't even have an job on. This is. An, what is this? And like, <laughs> he was like, is this he himself? He's like, are you serious right now? Is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! The, 
Yeah, but people, the young, young people, this doesn't work because they try to use this as propaganda to show like who's with us. Even non-hijabi girls are with us. But the message that is received is that you motherfuckers, you arrest us for wearing the same thing, right? You pieces of, I don't know, I don't want to swear, you piece of crap, right? You know, you arrest us for this. But when it comes to your own self-interest, you're willing to use the same standards that you go around and get put us in jail for. That's what people see when they... It, yeah. it reminds yeah. me of when they sent those girls who were social media influencers to the government office to um, promote family, um, getting married and having children to their followers. Remember? And all the... These are girls that the regime calls whores, right? And yes. they they were so desperate for support that they pull these women to go to their government offices to discuss how can you talk to young women about having babies, basically. Yes. And the yes. girls were making fun of them so much because they didn't even own the religious clothing required for them to go into the government the building. building. They, had they to were go asking biased. their followers, where do I buy this kind of hijab? <laughs> I don't even I don't even know where you buy this kind of thing. Like Yeah, yeah. And when they were buying it, they didn't know, they didn't know how to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> and they thought it was so funny to see each other's dressed so conservatively. It was a but, joke to them. But they get called whores and put these are like Instagram celebrities, right? Who the government calls whores and arrests and puts to jail. But then when they would needed their advice, they were inviting them to come and give the government advice. And but they asked them to go actually wear government standard hijab, and they were looking, they were driving around, they were videoing themselves looking around the city for where to buy such a government they approved hijab. To their followers, they're like, does anyone know? They're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they, when they put it on, like, I'm suffocating, <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> like I, I can't even breathe. When they go into the office, they still have it pulled back as far <laughs> as possible. Yeah. But you're still not wearing it right. All right. This looks and bad. the government to... has they have no choice but to sit there on this panel and be like, please talk yeah, yeah. to young women about having babies because yeah, yeah. birth rates are abysmal and we don't know what to yeah. do. They were like, they were like, we arrest you when it's your turn. But in the meantime, can you tell your female Instagram followers? that marriage is cool and having babies is awesome, okay? Because they don't listen to us. You seem to have more influence and our leaders are desperate. Like we need, we have a quota to fill and you women are not becoming pregnant. We need you to make Shia babies for us. We need Shia babies, okay? <laughs> okay. Our regime is falling because we don't have babies. So tell your, like get them to have more babies, okay? So it was, yeah. So the hypocrisy was seen there as well. It's interesting. Anyways. Yeah. Um, um, I'm glad also, you remember these things. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was one of my favorite things you've covered on Secular Jihadists. It was so funny. Um, yeah. So uh, I just wanted to highlight this one comment from Hooj, who just saying, sometimes it amazes me how they can jump from being sad to those bursts of laughter and horniness. <laughs> <laughs> That's how life works. <laughs> it's a roller coaster here on Atheist yeah. Republic, okay? <laughs> We yeah. know this, so we've embraced it. You know what? You know how who does the same thing? Okay, go big going from sad to bursts of laughter and horniness. Iranian women and girls right now. <laughs> I guess. No, I okay. thought you were gonna say the 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 people who cry for Hussein. The, the them too. Okay, for they're, no no, they're horny all the time. No, 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 no. That's different. Okay, they're horny while they're sad. Okay, <laughs> they. <laughs> okay, they're horny for Hussein while being sad. Okay, when they're crying, is their most horny. Okay, no, but now I'm serious though. Okay, Iranian women celebrate being sexy and laughing right after being released from prison and stuff like that, or right after going through the worst of tragedies, not Iranian women as a whole, like the Iranian women, some of these activists that we see, right? So it's amazing how in the middle of absolute tragedy, they remember to dance, they remember to sing, they remember to laugh, and they remember to enjoy being a woman and enjoy being sexy, okay? So sometimes 
I feel like I wouldn't be able to in the middle of that all of that situation, but they make it happen. I mean, you have to take your joy where you can. Yes. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.